Namaste, everyone, and welcome to part two of uh, Anchor the Light. And here we are on Friday, it's Healing Day, and if you haven't joined us for the earlier session, uh, we're devoting Friday for purification, we're literally just flushing things out. We're going to work on all the chakras and just clean out a lot of the blockages, negative thoughts, negative emotions. And the whole idea here is to prepare ourselves for the massive downpouring of divine energy coming basically next week, leading up to the Wesak Festival. So before we start, let's ask for blessings, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsuhok Sui, Mahaguru Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassion, purifying light, and soothing healing energy. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, let me just make sure that uh, everybody's getting it. Okay, we are good. All right, so I'll just cover a little bit of what we did this morning. Because I know the reason we do two, two of them is because we're people on this side of the world and the other side of the world, we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to experience the cleansing. So that's why we do two of them. Now, essentially, it's as simple as this. Divine energy vibrates up here. Your physical form vibrates down here. There's a big gap. That's why one of the things you will learn is if you try to give somebody high-frequency spiritual energy and they're not receptive, nothing happens. Now, some of you might have known what I'm talking about. You go, oh, somebody's sick. You go, okay, let me just give you lots of high-frequency divine energy, whatever word you want to use. And then you blast them with energy. You go, How do you feel? They go, nothing. You know that? The problem is not you. The problem is not understanding how energy works. The physical form vibrates down here. Spiritual energy vibrates up there. So when a person is not receptive, two things happen. Number one, the frequency drops. When you say frequency, frequency drops, it also has to do with the particles in their aura. All right? What does that mean? <clears throat> you see, if I take a box, you know, box, fill it with rocks, another box, I fill it with sand, obviously the sand will take up more space. The rocks, because of big particles, they're going to be spaces in between. So just imagine ordinary people who are not just serious about their spiritual path, you know, there's, there was a skeptical, angry, going through a lot of emotional pain, probably heavy, heavy, you know, all the time, all they want is to eat a lot of meat. So, you know, it's a little heavy energetically. So their particles are big, so there's a lot of spaces in between. Okay? Now, as you refine your frequency, you refine your energy body, you try to be calm, you do your meditation, you do your spiritual practice, you try to clean, uh, eat a cleaner diet, what happens is your energy field, your energy centers, the particles become more refined. When I say refined, it's going from big particles to small particles. Make sense? So that, that's why the aura is denser. You see, a person with big particles, it might have the illusion of having a big aura, but there's so many spaces, if you press against it, it shrinks. Make sense? So just imagine the energy field, the particles are so small, so they're compact. That's why you don't get tired. You see, when a person has particles are bigger, you know, there's so much space in between. So when they expend energy, what happens is it doesn't fill up right away. Make sense? It drains, and then before you know it, there's spaces in between, so the energy level drops. But if your energy send your energy, how do you call it? Your aura, the energy is very packed, particles very, very small. Even if you project energy, it is so high frequency, more energy replaces it very quickly. Make sense? So, that said, when we do this self-healing or we do this visualization, how much you get out of the energy we give you or the energy coming down when you meditate is also dependent on the size of the particles of your energy field. Make sense? So, what we try to do is something like this. And go back to the earlier session, it's explained in more detail. Divine energy vibrates here. The physical body vibrates here. The emotions vibrate here. The thoughts vibrate here. It's still below the divine energy. So what happens is, you cannot expect divine energy to drop in frequency. If it drops, then it's useless. Its power comes from its high frequency. Make sense? The problem is, if you don't do something to the physical, emotional, mental particles in your aura, raise it higher, then the divine energy <laughs> goes like this. 
That's why some people you say, oh, this person has a lot of problems. They really need a lot of help. You give them some healing energy, nothing happens. Now watch this. If the same person is going through a lot of difficult times, emotionally, mentally, physically, they're in trouble, but somehow they're so receptive. You know, they're so desperate. That's why we always say, desperate clients or patients make <laughs> very receptive patients or clients. Because when they become their desperate or they're very receptive, something happens to this, uh, let's just say, particles of the body, the emotions and thoughts. Something very interesting happens. It changes in color. So that changing in color is actually a manifestation of the changing of the frequency. So in the Krista Healing Book, Planet Krista Healing Book, Master Cho says, when a person becomes very receptive to divine energy, you know, they're very receptive to their healer, their, their preacher, their rabbi, their whoever their spiritual practitioner is, and they go, oh, please, I need some help. The interesting part is the aura starts turning light violet. You know, violet. So the violet is a manifestation of them becoming more receptive. So what happens is as they turn violet, the aura turns more violet, they become more receptive. Remember, this is the divine energy. Their frequency raises. So as their frequency raises, when the energy is given, either through meditation or the healer does it or whoever's officiating that particular ceremony, boom, it goes in like that. Then it's absorbed. It's very similar. You will notice if you ever attended, um, what do you call this, healing, healing circles or healing services, you go to church or whatever spiritual organization you grow to, go to, when they have a healing service, they don't just say, okay, come on in, have a seat. They blast you. They don't do that. What happens? You come in. Hello, namaste, how are you? And do some singing, right? Singing, holding hands, and all be filled with love. Let's do some chanting, whatever. All those have one purpose. You know what it is? It's to raise your frequency. Could you imagine you go into a healing service, like a church, you walk in, and whoever's official, okay, everyone sit down, now that you're over here, close your eyes, okay. Now you're filled with God's love and energy. People are going to go, what? I'm stressed out of my mind coming from work. What are you talking about? Get the idea? That's why you have, oftentimes you have, when you go to a service, there's a lot of singing, right? A lot of chanting, a lot of fellowshipping. All those are to do what? Two things. One, to clean yourself out from all the stress because otherwise you come into all that crap, right? So as you start singing, two things happen. The singing expels dirty energy, simultaneously replaced by higher frequency. So while this is happening, your frequency is getting closer and closer and closer to the divine energy. So the minute um, the healing service starts, where they actually say, okay, close your eyes, whatever, they project energy or they, <clears throat> they guide you through a prayer or meditation for healing, at that point, your frequency has gone up. That's how you go, <coughs> I feel it already. Make sense? But if they did it too early, it doesn't work. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Because when we do these healings now, we're not just going to say, okay, close your eyes, receive healing. It doesn't work. Well, some of you will because you're receptive already. But by and large, even if you're receptive, when you come in with a lot of stress, you have a lot of blockages, and then even though, yeah, I want to receive, but you know, this guy hurt my feelings earlier. I'm still pissed off, but I'm receptive. It doesn't work. So we have to first what? Flush things out allow the divine energy to go in. Now, there's a shortcut. The shortcut is to speed up the raising of your frequency, which is when you have you close your eyes, we literally replicate what is happening to the energy body of somebody who is not receptive and becoming receptive, turning violet. So we have you visualize your entire energy field turning violet. This is actually taught in pranic psychotherapy. Okay? Now, So when you're ready, what we'll do, we'll ask for divine blessing, bring the divine energy in first, change it into violet, crank it up in frequency, and then we go deeper. All right? I hope that helps in explaining it because I don't believe in, okay, just come in, just trust that everything is in divine order, not to the spiritual scientists. That don't fly to me. Because I've always been taught by my teacher, you need to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what is the mechanism and principle. 
Otherwise, it's blind faith. And all of a sudden, you guys say, yeah, but you know, that's where faith comes in. You have to have faith. You have to believe. I will believe when it makes sense. <laughs> I'm not a trusting guy. Nope. That's why my teacher always says, remember what the Buddha said, do not believe something just because somebody said so. Don't believe it just because tradition does it. That's written in holy books, just because this, just because that. You go, yeah, you're skeptical. I know. You know why? I've been hurt too many times. <laughs> in the earlier days, I believe everything that comes along the pipe. Everything that shines. Ooh, that mantra works. Oh, that crystal works. And before you know it, pfft, nothing happens. But then you go, okay, this person claims that if I stand on my head and chant Om three times, I'll be enlightened. Why do I have to stand on my head? Why well, can't I do it sitting down? And you ask the person, hey, don't ask, just trust. I go, namaste, go away. <laughs> Not interested. Make sense? That's the way of the Eightfold Path. Step one, right viewpoint. Right? Right viewpoint. Right viewpoint means seeing things clearly, what is actually going on. It doesn't mean like if you question it, doesn't mean you're not receptive. You just want to understand. Make sense? So that's why we're explaining this to you. Here's the best news of all. Even if you don't completely understand it, and again, we're leaving this online, you can go back and watch it. Even if you don't completely understand it, if you say, okay, part of it I do understand, but I do see the pattern of how it works. And as you go through the practice and you do the steps properly, it will work. Make sense? Okay. So when you're ready, let's do it. Close your eyes. Put your hands together on your heart. Focus on your crown gently. I am that I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion, not the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one with the divine spirit within me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There's only oneness. Be still. Now, put your hands down. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Above your crown is a beautiful ball of white light. Just look at that beautiful ball of white light. You don't have to see it clearly. It is there. Just keep looking at it. Now, simultaneously imagine your entire body is empty, hollow, like an empty bottle. It's like, like your organs are all transparent. Just be still. That beautiful white light above your head is now opening up like a waterfall, pouring white light into your crown, your brain, your eyes, your nose, your face, your entire head, your neck. That white light's pouring into your left arm, right arm, all the way down to the elbows, to your fingers, down to your chest, filling up your entire chest cavity, filling your heart, your lungs, your thymus gland, your stomach, liver, spleen, intestines, gallbladder, down, down, down to your hips, simultaneously down your neck, down your spine, all the way to the base of your spine. That white light is filling up your entire body all the way down to your hips, your reproductive organs, your thighs, your knees, your feet, all the way down. Just be receptive. Your entire body is super, super receptive to this energy. Just be still. Your entire body is now soaking in this beautiful white light. 
your body, your organs, simultaneously your emotional body, mental body, which are interpenetrating, are soaking in this white light. Inside, outside, you're both immersed and infused with this beautiful white light. Just be still. Just let it flow. Make sure your legs are not crossed so it can flow through you. So be still. The rest will be done for you. The beautiful white light that's pouring, continuously pouring through every particle of your being. And every cell, every particle of your being is soaking in it. Now that white light is now changing in frequency. From white, it's turning to light, light, green. Light, 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 green energy. Just be still. You don't have to visualize anything. It's being done for you. Any blockages on the lower levels are dissolved, disintegrated, and flush out the near salt water to you or the violet fire next to you. So be it. Just be receptive. Your entire body is filled with beautiful, beautiful white light that's turning green. Literally, you're soaking in liquid green light. Just make it happen. Make sure your tongue is on your palate. Just be still. Liquid green light. Very, very light. Cleansing your brain, your eyes, your nose, your throat, your chest, your arms, your legs, down your hips, down to your feet. Just let it work. You don't have to do anything. Beautiful liquid green light pouring through every cell in your body. <clears throat> the green light is also dissolving any negative cords connected to any of your chakras now. Green has a breaking down effect. Just be receptive. Now that liquid green light is raising in frequency. It's now changing to light, light violet, like lavender. Just be still. You don't have to do anything. It's just being done for you. Just make yourself, every part of your being, super, super absorbent to the beautiful violet light. Your body, your emotions, your thoughts are soaking in this violet light. Just be receptive. The rest is being done for you. Not if you had a stressful day, this is a great time to get good cleaning. Just allow it to happen. That's a beautiful thing about you. don't have to do anything, but just learn to receive. A lot of you are achievers, you're doers. Now learn to receive. Just keep imagining, soaking your entire being in liquid violet light. Some of you might feel your body's tingling, certain sensation of pressure or vibration, just let it happen. If you feel a discomfort, just say, I'm letting go. These are basically thought forms that are stuck in your aura and your chakras. Let it flow out. Be still. This is a critical part. Be still. Make sure your tongue is on the roof of your mouth. All that is just preparation. This is now the divine energy going in. Just be super receptive. Liquid electric violet light is pouring down your crown. Your crown centers are being cleansed. All negative thoughts and energy is dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled with near salt water violet fire to you now. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your forehead. Your ajna, the area in between your eyebrows and the back of your head. Your crown, forehead, ajna, chakras, your entire brain 
is now filled with liquid electric violet light, dissolving, disintegrating any negative thoughts, negative energies, and blockages, conscious or subconscious. Release to the nearest saltwater violet fire to you. Just be still. The liquid violet, electric violet light is pouring down to your throat, your neck, the entire chest area. All negative thoughts, negative energies are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to nearest saltwater violet fire to you. The liquid divine energy is pouring deep into your front and back solar plexus, simultaneously flooding your lower emotional, your lower astral body, dissolving any anger, resentment, jealousy, hatred, resentment. These are all dissolved, disintegrated by liquid divine energy and pouring out of your system into the near salt water of violet fire to you now. Your navel center is being cleansed, your sex center is being cleansed. The liquid divine energy is pouring down your spine. Your back salt plexus with all the resentment are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in their salt water. Down, down is cleansing your basic chakra. Any type of self-doubt are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled. So be it. Just be still. Make yourself super receptive. <clears throat> now, this particular energy we're using, I'm not gonna say what it is. Most of you know what it is. Don't know what it is anyway. Just be receptive. Just know it's secret sauce. Okay. Just be receptive. still just be still and let whatever happens happen We just said that we're going to cut the negative cords too. still listen just let the sound and the energy penetrate to every cell in your body to release any old anger resentment negative energy let it just be flushed out out of your system oh
Now open your hands like this and cross your legs and cross your hands, your hands and your feet. This will allow the stuff to go out, okay? Now listen carefully, follow, follow the instruction. Inhale the violet light. Exhale smoke out of your pores and out of your hands and feet. Again, inhale the brilliant electric violet light to every part of your body. Hold it. Exhale. Imagine exhaling smoke, just clouds coming out of your aura completely. One more time. Inhale the violet light. Exhale smoke. One more time. Inhale the brilliant light. Exhale any impurities out of your system completely. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Now say, I'm letting go. Completely letting go of all these lower frequencies, all these negative energies. Completely, permanently letting go. So be it. Now be still and let it drain out. Okay, now put your hand like this. Just say all these negative energies cut, 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 disconnect completely. Take your hands in a salt water or a violet fire you visualize. All right, how do you feel? Some of you are probably tingling. Every time we do this, some people go, I don't want to come back. So it's that simple. The key is the syntax or the sequence. You have to make sure that wherever the vibration of your body is, you have to shift this frequency. Otherwise, all this high frequency, divine energy, and whatever given to you, nothing happens because you can't absorb it. So the key is to raise your frequency like we just did and let the energy penetrate. If you observe your thoughts and your emotions, most of you also notice it's blank. Blank means those negative thoughts and emotions were disintegrated. Make sense? So... The idea here is after we're done with this, this is going to be a short session because I really want to focus on the purification. I want to make sure you guys don't explode when WESA comes in, or like most people do. You know, the most powerful food in the year, most people just go nuts. Then you add to it watching the news about you know, whatever's left over the pandemic, about the Ukraine war, and all that stuff. People just, ah, the energy comes in like a fertilizer. Kapow! That's where you have the advantage. You know, knowledge is power. Knowing that, hey, that stuff is happening, make sure I prepare myself. Make sense? So, anyway, um, next week, starting Monday, again, we're not having actor light because I'll be focusing on the seven-day purification. And what we're doing, just in case some of you don't know, it's going to be three sessions a day. Yeah. You want to make sure that uh, nobody has an excuse. Oh, I wasn't ready. So, the 9.30 to 10 is cleansing, more intense than what we did these two days. So, it's 7.30 at night. In the middle is the purification lecture and meditation. So we do that Monday to Sunday. Sunday is WESA. All right? And if you want to join us, great. If you can, for whatever reason, at least you have this video, you can watch and then keep cleaning yourself up. How much you get out of this is dependent on your frequency. Remember what I said. If you're vibrating down here with all your stress and negative thoughts and emotions and worries, which is understandable, whatever is going on, imagine you put fertilizer on it Guess what explodes? Make sense? So again, even if you cannot join us for the seven-day purification, at least for the next seven days before Sunday, all the way leading up to Sunday, do your own meditation. We have a lot of videos you can watch. You can do exercises, visualize cleaning yourself with green and violet. Okay? In other words, it's as simple as this. Come Sunday, May 15, when the energy pours down massively, everything gets amplified. The good and the not so good. So the choice is yours. Now, let me leave you with one thought. A lot of people say, well, this West Sock thing, I don't believe in it. Yeah, I completely agree. Let me tell you what happened with me. Many years ago, I remember uh, <laughs> one night I told my wife, oh, I'm going to sleep in a guest room. Why? I don't know, I just feel like it. Okay. That night, lay down. In the middle of the night, I saw flashing light. I go, oh, great. You know, I thought the cars were going by. You know, the window uh, blinds, I thought it was open. Oh, 
men who had their high headlights on. So I was about to get up and close, you know, the, the window shades, right? I found myself almost like electrocuted. I can get up. It's the weirdest thing. And before you know it, it's morning. I go, man, that was the weirdest dream. That was it. A few weeks later, Grandma Sacho came to the United States, was going to teach classes here. I told him the story. I said, ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. But I told him the date, and he go, ah, oh, okay, okay. That was the time of the Wesak Festival. I said, what is that? And he told me about it. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But here's my point. See, being a Southern Baptist, I'm not supposed to believe in any of this stuff. Right? Southern Baptist, you know, as strict as you can get. And I remember going, well, I don't believe in that stuff. <laughs> I didn't tell him that. He could tell. Then he looked at me and goes, look, whether you actively, consciously participated or not, your soul participated. I go, huh? You see, during the Wesak Festival, the most powerful full moon of the year, all the spiritual practitioners in the world, their souls, not their bodies, participate in receiving this massive energy coming in, coming down from the Lord Buddha and the higher beings to bless the world. So even if you don't believe it, if your soul is already in the spiritual path, you're part of it. Now, as that trickle into your consciousness and your body and your emotions, that's when it either makes things, make things go crazy or you take advantage of it. So for most people who are asleep to who they are, then as the Holy Master Dual Kula Tibetan said, it's a time of crisis. But for people who are awake, or at least semi-awake to who they are, they're a spiritual being having an earthly journey and we're here to serve others. It's a time of opportunity to clean up all our crap, simultaneously awaken the goodness within us. How much is that worth to you? So whether you join us or not for the seven day, the Wesak Full Moon Meditation, which is I think nine o'clock at night, Sunday night, is available for everyone online for free okay so you don't say oh, it's all about money well if you're gonna complain now must go away all right <laughs> if you still don't get it i can't help you all right so the seven days to prepare if you want to join us and for whatever reason you can't at least a sunday night it's available you just have to register wherever it is just go to mastergo.org uh, everything's there available for you okay i think i've done my job uh, i wish all of you a fantastic weekend and uh, I think that's it. Let's give thanks. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, and saints, to all the holy archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, thank you. To my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tuakok Sui Mahaguji Mailing, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Om. Amen. Amin. Tatastu, and so it is. All right. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. I wish you a wonderful, fantastic weekend. Don't do anything crazy. Of course, that's subject to interpretation. Anyway, all right. Take good care, and we will see most of you next week. If you haven't signed up yet, it's still available. Uh, it starts 9.30 if you join the healing sessions, okay? Anyway, the link is there. We will see you next week. God bless. Take care.